will not read an empty space. So you'll have to put either a hyphen or group everything together or an underscore. And then you also need to input the actual location of that start point relative to the model's datum. Actually, first I need to locate the model. So let me do that. I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to locate the model right now because right now that is not how I have it oriented. So I'm going to go to model, locate, and I'm going to select features that I want to use. So I'm going to select this bottom face and use just this feature. I want that to face negative Z. If it was in positive Z, it would flip the part upside down, but I want that face facing down. Click next. Now for it to rotate, I'm going to select inside the slot this piece, that, that face right there, just this feature. Okay, and then I'm going to tell it which way I want it to face. I actually have it set up so that it's facing the positive X. So now that is how I have the part set up as shown in the uh, setup pictures. Click next again. The model locate position part, this will shift the model away from its, act, from its uh, origin. I recommend not doing anything. Just leave it where it's at. And then I'm going to create the save work cell. This creates a WCL format a file in your folder. That tells you the part orientation. I'm going to browse. Make sure that it's going in the right place. So under OS, C, Renishaw, Programs, expand that, and then you're going to locate your file folder. There it is, okay. Uncheck insert location datum. You want it to stay with the machine. And then okay. Now it's located the part. Save. And it will remember this orientation every time you open the program now. So back to where I was with the starting point. We'll go to inspect. Start zero point or point zero. I'm gonna name that start point. And then now I need to put the actual coordinates of that location, the center of this hole, relative to the model's origin, which is the center of the taper, level with that face. And that you will get from the drawing. So that is going to be Y zero Z two point five. Click the check the checkbox, and in the X and in the sideways axis, that is going to be point two five. Click the checkbox. Now you can see in the model it's created a point right in the center of that hole just where I put my uh, probe in the setup pictures. So now I'm going to create that feature by clicking apply. Now I turned white there for my nominal, but it's blue over here for the actual. So we want those to overlap. I'm going to make that a datum. So I'm going to click datum, one axis, label that whatever you want, so long as you know what it is. No spaces because it is a command line here. You can use an underscore in my start point. This is actually in the Z plus axis. You can see right here, your IJK, that's your axis, X, Y, Z. Positive one means it's positive Z. And make that my X, Y, and Z origin. Click OK. And now move the model over to overlap with where the actual point zero is, the actual start point. 
and you can see that the axis is correct. You can see X right here, Y, and Z. So everything laid out the way that we wanted it to. Now we can actually start programming from there. Say, now we've told the computer and the, the uh, CMM where the part is, but it has not actually touched the part yet. So now we're gonna actually have it do manual, or do uh, program measurements. So we're gonna change settings mode to program. Always save office. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to touch off on the top, create a datum plane for that. Double click on the dollar signs over here, spacing it out, go to inspect, plane, I'm going to select this plane. They're all on the same surface, so selecting this one, you can still touch off on any of these surfaces. You can also select additional geometry, and I can light them all up. But it really doesn't make much of a difference there. I'm going to name that top surface. Click the checkbox, and then this I want to be a CMM movement. I don't want the head to rotate or flick or go at an angle. I want it to locate the part first. So I'm going to go to orientation, none, and the touch is going to be a CMM. And then I can just click on the actual model for its point locations. So I'll just have it take a point here now, in between these holes, in between these, so I'll take four points on this surface. I'll take three points here, three points here. This does rely on you having the part actually physically put, placed as close to the orientation as the model as possible. So you want to try to give yourself a little bit of leeway, so don't program it right by the edge, because if the part is located a little bit off, you might miss the part. Click Apply, and it's going to warn you it's going to go into an automatic operation, and it's actually going to physically measure the part. Well, here's some troubleshooting. I forgot to lift the probe out of the part prior to touching. So it is still inside the part. So it crashed on the side. So I'm gonna click OK, OK. I do want to keep the generated code so, because I don't want to have to go through all of that again. So I'm gonna click Yes. So it's gonna remember everything I told it, but what I'm gonna do above that, I'm gonna double click above the top surface, right below program mode, insert a comment to give another space, and I'm gonna input an absolute movement. So right now it's at zero, zero right here in the middle of this hole. I'm going to have it go zero, zero up half an inch. Still an A zero, B zero. Actually I'll do the part coordinate system just to keep it consistent. So it's going to be at 90, zero, 180. And I'm going to run that. So now it is actually half an inch above the part. You can't tell because that arrow is in the way, but the probe is up here now, no longer down here. And now I'm going to run that surface. And you can see the simulation is doing the same thing that the physical CMM is doing, touching off on each of these points. Next, now I'm going to go back up here, right below that command, save it again, and I'm going to turn that surface into a datum, just so I can locate the part. After I do that, you should see the model shift slightly for whatever variance there might have been from my start point. So I'm going to click datum, one axis, and I'll make this one, I'll just name this one top surface.
This is going to be my Z plus axis, and it's only going to be my Z origin. Click OK, and there was a slight shift in the model. So we're starting to locate the part a little bit better now. So now I'm going to go to another absolute movement. Let me zoom back on it. Since I'm above the part, I'm going to have it go around. I'm going to move to the side and have it measure around the OD to get my central axis. So X, I will make that. Oops. Two, Y, negative two, Z, still above the part so it doesn't crash. And I will make this the same orientation, 90, 0, 180. That's moved off to the side and giving me a little bit of room to work with so I can have an approach to this OD. Now you can see there's a lot of gaps and holes in the uh, flange OD, so we're going to program around those. I'm going to go to inspect and cylinder, and I'm going to click on that. It's highlighted it, and I'm going to name that flange OD. I'm going to adjust it a little bit because I'm going to program it to take points at the top and bottom of this simulated cylinder. So I'm actually going to shrink it a little bit and have it go down negative three and that shifted it down. Well, actually, yeah, go a little bit higher. So it'll be, a, I want to make sure there's plenty of room above this hole. And then I'm going to modify, it is an outer diameter and it is bound so it has a length. If it was unbound it would not have a length. I'm going to modify the length to negative 0.5. And I think that should give me enough room to stay on there. Now I can program my points. I'm actually going to change my approach and my attract just to give myself extra room to move around. So I can make my approach a quarter of an inch and my retract a quarter of an inch. I'm going to increase my number of touches to sixteen thirty-two. Um, no, that's too many. We'll do twenty-four. Touch circles. Make your distance between sections equal to the length of your cylinder. That way, it'll actually be at the top and bottom of your simulated cylinder. Two sections, 12 points each. Check your tilt and advance, and it'll show you where it's at. I actually want to have the tilt a little bit wider. Increase that. As you can see, it made this part here wider, so it's going to be a little bit further away. And that actually looks pretty good. Apply that, and that just puts your points in the model. And you can see the red line is actually the path that the probe will follow. It's not going to be crashing into the part, trying to go between points, which is why I set the approach in the retract at a quarter of an inch instead of an eighth of an inch, because if it was an eighth of an inch, it would be a lot closer. Like I said, I can show you that here. Now, do you see how it's shrunk down? 